They think it's resolved. All righty. So um, we're glad to have you tonight and uh, glad to be with you. Praise the Lord. And um, we're not sure if we're on Facebook yet. Uh, we do. I believe we are streaming to the website. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now we just popped up on Facebook. So let me share. And uh, we are out there. I'm going to share it real quick because we've been have, waiting for this for 15 minutes to be able to get to this point. And uh, but uh, really glad to have you with us tonight. Those that are joining in with us right now. Um, praise the Lord. And so, uh, you know, this is a, a new year and the. Um, uh, we've come out of a, a 2020 and all these things and. As we said in our Christmas, post-Christmas message that we needed to uh, reflect, uh, restore, and run. We needed to reflect on how we did or didn't do things right in 2020 and how we handled uh, as believers and as Christians the things that were going on and how we got off track. Um, also, we um, then said restore, get back to doing things we're supposed to do, and then run with it. Praise the Lord. And we're in a new year now. And, um, you know, this past year has been a challenge as far as, you know, like meeting in person. We went nine weeks. We couldn't meet in person. We still are not in person on Wednesday nights. Um, <clears throat> and being able to do church, to be a church, to be together and grow and to do things we need to do um, has been a challenge. And we're, we're looking at now... Um, you know, we need we need to be able to do certain things like uh, come together and pray. Um, and so beginning in February, the first uh, Tuesday night of February, uh, we will be beginning a virtual uh, Tuesday night service, uh, prayer service, where we uh, we come together and we pray. We'll be uh, we're trying to decide what platform we want to use. Um, there's a couple out there, um, one of them being. Um, Zoom, and then there's some other stuff out there. Um, Dr. Bill has got a, uh, got one that he um, he's uh, recommended to us. We're, we're trying to analyze um, from user standpoint for all of our different members and uh, act ease of access to um, broadcast and to invite people to these uh, the prayer service. Um, which one to use? So that'll be coming, and um, praise the Lord and. We will be going there. So anyway, we're beginning that. So and and leading up to that, uh, we wanted to spend some time uh, teaching on prayer and uh, kind of gearing towards that uh, because of the importance of what we're going to be doing. Uh, we want to make sure this is uh, facilitated and consistent, and that we uh, we carry out uh, what we need to do as a church body. Praise the Lord. So just kind of the little underlying uh, reasoning behind this. Um, let's look in um, Acts chapter 1, if you will. We can go to Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Now we can read from Acts chapter 1 all the way into chapter 2. Hallelujah. So I hope y'all are having a great day. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now I'm not, I probably won't read all of this. I'm, there's a couple things I'm after. Um, Acts chapter 1 verse 14 says this, And these all continued with one accord to prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Okay. And then we, you know, it goes on. We, and then we get in chapter two. And when the um, day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so my, my key here is, though, the one thing that they did uh, was that they continued in one accord in prayer and supplication. And supplication is a form of prayer. And, um, and so we wanted to take note of that, that before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, as we have recorded in Acts chapter 2, they had continued 
in prayer. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Flip over there with me for a moment. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them among, uh, to all men, and every man had, uh, as every man had need, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, with breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Notice back again, verse 42, they were together in fellowship, breaking bread, and in prayer okay so we have we have a theme here uh, at ch chapter 3 verse 1 now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour which is roughly um oh six, three o'clock in the afternoon okay being the ninth hour and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was uh, carried who was laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms of them as they entered in who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple and Peter fasted his eyes on him and said with John saying, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping and walking, uh, leaping up stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Again, where were they going? They were going to prayer. Um, I want to stop here for a moment. Notice that there, we have these um, things happening in the church and the, there's a, there's a connection between what God's doing and prayer. Connection between what God's doing and prayer. Um, and I have to say, you know, one of the things I saw in the past year, uh, particularly uh, uh, people focusing on the political arena, is we cannot let our, um, our predisposition about things govern how we pray. The Word of God says that they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. It's, it's, it's imperative that we allow the Holy Ghost to lead us. I remember a number of years ago um, listening to a, um, a, a teaching by Lynn Hammond, and she was teaching along the lines of prayer. And um, she had been um, spending some, some period of time... I, uh, quite frankly, uh, from what she said in this in this uh, testimony sermon, uh, she said that she had been praying for several months about something and wasn't and just couldn't get anywhere, couldn't get answers, couldn't get um, relief that she had prayed some things outright, um, and she just kept praying and just kept praying and you know and finally she just got um, to the point she called she called up Brother Hagen and I said Dad I'm, I've been praying about such and such such and such. Uh, for some time, and I just I, I just can't get anywhere, and, and um, I, I just don't know what to do. And he, he just didn't take him long. He said, that's because the Spirit of God's not hooking up with you. <laughs> well, I'm praying. I'm doing all the, the formulas, and I'm doing all the steps, but the Spirit of God's not hooking up with us. One of the things in prayer that we should do is first spend time with the Lord and ascertain the direction in prayer we should go. That's, that is uh, invaluable. It's imperative. It's necessary. Um, and this will tie back into, you can't start praying things out and then start trying to make faith confessions about it unless you know you've gotten into the will of God about it. Because faith begins with the will of God is known. That, that's, 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 this is not something we can circumvent. 
okay? Um, now we can begin prayer, and as we're led by the Spirit, He can direct us into places. That's why oftentimes it's important to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in other tongues, to allow the Spirit of God to, to direct and, and um, bring things up to us. And as we pray them out, then we, we are picking up and ascertaining the will of God, and then we can follow that leading of the Spirit and be in prayer and faith. Praise the Lord. Can I get at least a semi-amen out there from the, from the uh, church folk? Hallelujah. Like a little heart clap thing. So praise the Lord. So um, now when you already know from Scripture or from things that God's already put in your heart that to how to pray things out in a certain way. And, and listen, even at that, we should still allow him to lead us in that. Because we might take something he said and try to pray it in a direction that that wasn't what he was trying to uh, uh, get us to. I remember a number of years ago, we had a staff member, um, and they were, um, you know, they had worked with us for a number of years. They were, they were good people, loved the Lord, um, but they had uh, been visiting um, some meetings with an um, another organization, uh, uh, well, a minister's organization, not another church, but a minister. And they began to speak to them over about, you know, ministry and doing this and ministry, yada, 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 yada. And they got, began to pray and began to pray in that direction. And as they prayed in that direction, the more they prayed in that direction, the bigger it got to them. And, and, and this is true. You pray things in a certain direction, it will become big to you. Even if it's not God leading you that way, you can pray yourself into that position. And um, so, so it, it came. They finally came and said, look, we're, we're leaving. We're going to go start a church here and, and do this. And um, we, um, I didn't really think it was the right thing to do. But, um, you know, we had, to, we had to leave that in the hands of the Lord. You know, I had to say what I, you know, I think I believe I should say, I'm not really sure that's the right thing to do. But, you know, uh, but they, they, they had prayed it and prayed it and prayed it. And um, so um, they stepped down off the staff and began to visit this other city um, a number of hours away. Uh, to try to start, you know, to start laying the groundwork to start a church. And um, as they did so, <clears throat> um, because they, they they were on staff, but they had resigned their staff. They had lost the, they, they lost their source of income. Um, they weren't you know, well. I didn't say they lost. God's our source, but that stream of income was no longer there. They weren't working at the church anymore. And um, so. We um, went several weeks, and um, my wife and I had gone out of town. Back then, we were homeschooling all of our kids, and it was the fall, and we, we had gone to, like, Dollywood or something. And, um, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. And um, got back home on a Saturday so we could get ready for church on Sunday. And when we got back, um, there was a note on my door. It said, Pastor Ed. I, I have to speak with you. And um, now, not it wasn't big cell phone error. We didn't you didn't carry cell phones around. We didn't. I don't know if we had them, but we had a bag phone. But you know, it wasn't just something you just calling you wasn't readily, whatever. And we've got I've got to talk to you. So we got back in town. I called him on the phone. Called him at home and said, "Well, look, I can meet you at the church because I lived like four, five minutes away. So they and they lived about ten. So they met he met me at the church, the husband." And uh, we sat down, and uh, he was sitting there, and um, he's struggling uh, about this decision. And, and I finally just said, I said, look, whether this was what God really wanted you to do or not, you know, your, your heart is to do something for the kingdom of God. And I said, just like Israel wanted a king and God granted them a king, I said, you go here, God's going to bless you, um, God will take care of you, and so forth. And, um, and I kind of left it there, you know, don't, don't, listen, don't, let's stop struggling here. You know, God loves you, God's for you, um, you know, he'll, he'll take care of you. And even if it wasn't the, quite the right move, he can make things, do things and bless you because your heart's to do something for the kingdom. And uh, kind of left it there and went home. Well, the next day we come to church and um, 
I come out of the ready room off the side of the platform, walk up on the platform during worship, and they're on the front row. And I'll be honest with you, uh, the wife looked like um, Pigpen from the Peanuts gang. It was like this dark cloud of oppression, depression. I mean, horrid situation. They didn't have any food left. They didn't have any in income coming in. They had small baby. Um, things just weren't going good. And I'm sitting on the platform, and I look out that, and my heart just was overwhelmed with compassion. And I said, Lord, I'm taking up an offering for them. And I've never, I haven't had this happen many times in, in uh, 40 years of ministry. This year is my 40th year in ministry. But the Lord said, no. And I went, yes, sir. He didn't tell me why. He said, no. And it was strong. And um, I said, okay. Well, we went on, finished worship. We went and received the offering and so forth. And as we're receiving the offering, the wife dug into her purse and put change in the offering. And um, when she did, the Lord said, now. I was Because before, I was going to stop the service right then and receive an offering. I'm like, I, I, I can't sit here and watch them struggle like this. And uh, he said, now you can receive that offering. I said, yes, sir. And, um, and so I, um, I stopped. I finished receiving the church offering. And then I said, now. Now, and you get, you know, here's a little backstory. I'd had people in the church coming to me saying, they're missing God. They shouldn't be doing this. Da, 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 da. I said, let the Lord work it. Let the Lord deal with it. If they go, God will take care of them, you know. And um, so um, they, I said, for the church, and because that, this had all been going on, people were talking and that kind of stuff about they're making a bad mistake, da 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 da. I said, look, this is not about whether somebody's made a mistake or they're making a wrong move or not. This has nothing to do with that. I said, they're, they've been a part of this church, they're struggling. We need to help take care of them. And um, and so I, st I started to receive the offering. And um, before, I had, before I received it, I, um, I said, why don't y'all come up here and so they could face the church and the church could, you know, just cover love on them financially and love on them. And um, the... Uh, the young man that was on staff and um, a, um, had, had resigned I said, Pastor Ed, can I say something? I said, sure. And um, he had, he, he took the microphone. And he said, I met with pastor last night. And when we were talking, he said, Israel wanted a king and God granted them a king. He said, and I wrestled with that all night. I don't want a king. I want to be in the will of God. And um, the wife said, and she, and she was there. Now listen, the wife's sitting there and, and, and she's like a little bit freaked out because the husband looked at her on the, when he got up to come up there and said, you know, we're not going, don't you? And she it didn't, she couldn't, she couldn't get her head around at the moment because they've been praying for months and pray, this, that's why I was telling the story. They've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying this out and moved their hearts to that point. And um, so we received the offering. One, one family gave their entire week's paycheck. I believe somewhere in the neighborhood of over $3,000 came in in that offering of a church with 80 people sitting out there. And um, so we gave them the offering and she's standing there with all, they, they held the bucket and people putting checks in, putting cash in. And she said, and she broke and began to cry. She said, I couldn't let go. I had prayed this out. I couldn't let go. My husband turned to me when he came up here and said, you know, we're not going, don't you? She said, but something about 
what y'all just did. The offering, y'all doing this, broke it. Well, praise the Lord. And they stayed and, and were a blessing to us for many years after that. Praise the Lord. And then, and then made some decisions to, to um, do some other things with their, their ministry and so forth. And that's great. Um, but I just want you to know, um, they were about to make a major move mistake because they had prayed it that way. So it's important that we learn to get um, the will of God before we start praying it out a certain way. That's, that's so important to continue. And just so we, we, we'll visit back to Lynn Hammond um, where the Lord spoke to her. I mean, Brother Hammond said, the Holy Ghost is not hooking up with you. You're going to have to pray and find out the direction the Lord wants you to pray in for him to hook up with you. Because when he's not hooking up with you, you can't get in faith about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so this is bringing me to this. And this is, you know, this is kind of where we're going to share tonight. And this is kind of where we're going to get to and kind of uh, stop as this kind of a, a lead in. And uh, we'll go into more next next week. Um, back in 1988, we moved to Greensboro in 1987, and uh, to uh, pastor the church that we we currently pastor. And um, in the uh, September of '87, we took the full time pastor to this church. In the spring of 19. 88 um we were having a meeting and i had a vision now brother hagan used to call him a mini vision m-i-n-i -I. <laughs> praise what he would say i had a mini vision m-i-n-i -I. <laughs> praise the lord not many m-a-m-y but m-i-n-i-n-y <clears throat> and so the lord uh i had this quick vision now, the thing about spiritual things is you can have a mini vision and it, and, and it tell a story that takes you five minutes to rehearse. And that kind of what happened. Um, in that vision, I saw um, the city of Greensboro, Piedmont Triad, the local area. Um, and over the city was gross darkness. Gross darkness. And light wasn't coming through. It was just dark. And um, as I was standing watching this and seeing this, um, a shaft of light came up out of the, out of the um, city and went through this, this dark clouds over the city. And as it did, I was caught up to where those clouds were, and they weren't clouds, they were demon spirits, forces of darkness, principalities, powers, hooked arm and arm together over the area, you see. And we, we could go into some things in the Old Testament, uh, how the, you know, Daniel set himself to fast, but the prince of Persia, was, well, the prince of Persia withstood him. Um, you know, the angel said, that I came th uh, three weeks ago, I was sent, but the prince of Persia stood me, withstood me. That was the demonic forces withstood the, that angel. And, um, and as I did, you know, um, I'm seeing this, but then the clouds begin to roll back and open up. And this genie lamp, that's the only way I can describe it. You know, the old, the lamps that they use in the genie movies, that kind of stuff. I see that and it tips over and liquid drops of light. No, I'm sorry. I left out a whole major part here. I did. I got to back up. So the shaft of light goes through. The clouds roll back a little bit. And Jesus descended through the clouds and stood on the earth and reached down and picked up the area, Greensboro and surrounding area, up and held it up. And then I saw this, this like genie lamp. And the clouds had all rolled back, which were the demonic forces. It's, it's like a genie lamp tips over and liquid drops of light begin to fall on, on, the, on the city in their area. And um, as it does, 
suddenly I was taken over to a um, to a building, and it was just it was a and and I know it's symbolic. I don't I don't really believe it was the actual structure, but it was the symbolic. There was a a square building with revolving doors on it on all four sides, and as far as the eye could see, you saw people that were uh, in darkness. There was no spiritual life in them, no spiritual light in them. But they went through the revolving door, and when they came back out, they were full of light. And um, I knew that that was our church. That was our role. That was, that was the role that our church had. Um, that were, and then the Lord spoke and said, there will be a revival that will begin here and spread up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States of America. And I was like, wow. And then it was over. Now, this has been... Uh, 30, 33, 30, going on 30. Well, this spring will be 34 years. Okay. And um, you, you kind of want to go, well, it hadn't happened yet. And it has not happened yet. Praise the Lord. And we could, we could get into some other things on spiritual things and timing and that kind of thing. But as we're coming in uh, to what's going on in the earth, not, not a calendar year, but what's going on in the earth, and, and timetables in the, you know, in the earth and that kind of thing. Um, we're having to um, understand Jesus is going to come back. And Faith and Victory Church has a role. Uh, we're, we're believing God to get the money for the down payment to purchase this building that's available for us right now, sitting there. It just keeps sitting there. We haven't gotten the money yet, but that, you know what? It's still sitting there. Uh, praise the Lord. And, um, Glory to God. And so if you've got $40,000 laying around and you want to give it so we can get that building, go ahead and send it. We'll, we will be gladly go buy the building tomorrow. Hallelujah. And uh, to get, you know, get in and uh, have our own permanent place. But as we're doing this, let's go back into this vision. Because we, we've talked about for years, you know, the revival and the people coming from all you know, the north, south, the east, and the west coming in and all this kind of stuff. But the first thing that happened was the shaft of light that went up out of the city. And at that point, I forgot that I left this out. The Lord said, that's the prayers of the saints. The shaft of light was the prayers of the saints. Now, what did God say? In that he was saying, this is going to happen, but it's going to take prayers of the saints to facilitate it. Can't just sit back and wait for it to happen without the prayers of the saints. And that, that's why I read some of these scriptures to you tonight. We're going to have to understand that we're going to have to become, and I don't want you to misunderstand this phrase, aggressive in praying this out. Consistent, strong, at the same time letting the Holy Ghost lead us because he said that's the prayers of the saints. Now, I don't know exactly what prayers they are. That's things that's going to be taking place as we begin to pray in this line about this vision and about the things coming to pass. How is he going to lead us in effectual prayer about it? How is he going to lead us to pray in light of his will? What are we, what are we going to need to pray about that will open the door to this happening or that happening. So, and then we go pray about that so that different things will set. There are things sometimes that must be prayed out in order for what God showed you, not praying about what God shows you to come to pass. There are things that got to be prayed out that set up what God shows you to come to pass. And wow, sometimes there's a journey to things. I fully believe that my purpose and the purpose of my family in ministry and those that are, that are, that are with us in the, in the church, our, our role and purpose has not been fulfilled in what God wants done. And, but in order to achieve that, 
we're going to have to come together with the um, narrow point of finding out how God wants us to pray this out and move in that direction. Be led by the Spirit in prayer in regards to what God has for us as a ministry and a church and how to facilitate the things he showed me um, in that vision to see it come to pass. Amen. I said amen. Uh, it's so important. It's in, in, <clears throat> um, you know, there were, there were things in my life that took over 20 years from the time the Lord showed me for them to come to pass. And there's other things that he showed me that haven't come to pass. I remember Brother Summerall talking about that, you know, Brother Wigglesworth laid hands on him and said, you know, and said some things and said, and I won't see it. You know, this is coming and this is going to happen. He said, I won't see it, but young man, you will. Hallelujah. And I've heard ministers share, you know, God showed me such and such, such and such. And it was years later that it came to pass. Well, see, there are, there are things that are timing. Just flat out timing. Um, it's, it's a timing in the, in the things of God that had to be prayed. There are certain things that need to take place before others can take place, before this can take place, before that can take place, so that this actually comes to pass. So it can be have a whole stream of things in between. And um, I, I don't have time to, die, to, to, you know, to share how God first spoke to me that I would, I would minister in the Orient two weeks after I got saved, but it was over 20 years before that happened. And all the things that took place that when you look back in retrospect, you think, I couldn't have laid that out and planned it that way uh, in any way, shape, or form. But looking at it, you're saying, well, God was doing this, and God was doing that, and God took it over here, and God went over there, and God did this, and this, and this, and this. This happened, this happened, this happened, and this happened, and now here I am. Well, on that end of it, you can look back and see the journey. Then on the front end, on the other end of it, you couldn't see the end. You were following him. God told Abraham, get thee out of thy kindred, away from thy father's house, and go to a place that I will show you. Hallelujah. And so, church, we are about to engage in a journey. And I, I have a stirring in my heart that this is the season and the time to move this direction. It's been sitting there. And there are times it's just sat on the shelf, kind of like an old book that you like. You pull it out and you dust it off and say, yeah, that's nice. And then put it back down. And then one day you pick it up and you just have a desire to read it. And there, all of a sudden, you want to read that book, and you, you can't put it down. I, I believe that this is a time and a season that this is a stirring, not to just revisit something, but they have to go pick it up and dust it off because it's time. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Can y'all say amen out there with me? And uh, so glad to have y'all with me tonight and joining me. Um, so, like I said, beginning in, in, in um, February, the first Tuesday night, we will begin a virtual, on, um, virtual meeting type. It won't be where I'm sitting here in front of the camera praying you're at home and you're totally out of it. We want to have it so that if you, we need uh, interjection from someone, we can unmute your mic and you can join in and say something. Or we could unmute our mics and I'll pray together corporately out loud. Um, and, um, and of course we, we with, with sort of these, some of these platforms, we can mute everybody all of a sudden. And then, you know, um, so they, they were not overriding everything, <clears throat> but the, we've got to get to it. We can't keep waiting for the, everything to open up and to, you know, be, have, be, have, have a building and get to get in the building and everybody, you know, we have to do something now. And so we're going to start here with these virtual prayer services. Um, I know in Zoom, I don't know about these other platforms, but I know in Zoom, you, we can set it up where we invite you each Tuesday and you could just log in. 
um, with the invite and get involved. Okay. Um, we'll check, we'll finish checking out and we'll, we'll come up with the final platform we're going to use kind of leaning to that. Cause uh, you know, most people that I'm with here in the house know it or the family that's here with, with me know it. And, uh, but I'm kind of leaning that way, but we'll see. Um, it's a free app. Is that correct? That's a free app and you can download it. And I know some of the other things are free, but, um, but we can put, you can actually see people up on the screen. We could, you know, or you can put something up there so you don't, they can't see your house. If you don't want somebody seeing your house or if you didn't do your hair that day. <laughs> and you know, if you're, if you got on, if you got curlers and your sh what, shift a robe, like they call it down East, um, and your bedroom slippers, you don't want anybody to see it. We, you can hide your face. You, the camera doesn't have to be on. And, uh, but I want you know, and next week we'll, we'll go over some more scriptures on the, um, on the prayer. On prayer, but I wanted to go ahead and lay this out there. We're only a couple, a couple of weeks away from the second, I guess, pretty close to a couple, um, and so we're getting up on that. We're going to be up on this real soon, and we want to invite you to be a part of this. Um, if you want to be a part, <clears throat> and you're out there, email us at um, uh, pastor at fvc dot org with your email address and do we need phone numbers for like some of these things in order to invite them or just their email address or just do an email address. Okay. So give, give us your email address so we can put you into the invite list for these prayer services. Um, it's not going to be a broadcast open over the internet to everybody on the planet, but it is open to people who want to be a part. Okay. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll allow you to be a part. Um, hallelujah. And this is not a, this is not a prophecy meeting where people are going to come in and prophesy to everybody. This is going to be prayer. This, the purpose of this is to pray things out. Okay. Uh, well, you don't believe yeah, I believe in prophecy, but it's, this is not the, you know, this, we have a purpose. We are establishing a purpose and to pray things about the direction of our church and about this vision and to see what we, how we need to pray and, and go and follow this and go and get this um, where the Lord brings to pass that which he spoke. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us. We're going we're to go ahead and receive our offering for tonight. If you need to give, um, if you need to give electronically, we, we use PayPal, um, which is, what is PayPal? The tag that you use for PayPal. Or is it donations at fvc.org? PayPal is donations, plural, at fvc.org. And then uh, Cash App is Faith Victory Church. The word and is not in there, so it's Faith Victory Church. What, panel sign, Faith Victory Church. Or dollar sign, dollar sign, Faith Victory Church. Oh, is it on the screen? Okay, it's on the screen. There you go, donations. All right. It's on the screen. Hallelujah. And um, so um, we weren't going to pray and then you can give. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for all those who are giving. We thank you that they're blessed abundantly. Heaven's windows opened unto them and you pour out blessings on them. They don't have room enough to receive. Thank you for bringing us into the land of, of plenty, bringing us into the land where we flourish and are able to continue to uh, and, and fulfill our purpose as a church and a ministry in reaching people with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. We sure love you. We appreciate you. And we thank God for you. And uh, may you be abundantly blessed in everything you set your hand to. And until we meet again, join us this coming Sunday at 1230. We're currently meeting at New Life Family Church in um, High Point. With, it's got a Jamestown address, but uh, it's High Point, Jamestown. Um. And we're meeting at 1230 there because our where we, we've been, we're meeting before the COVID thing is still shut down. We can't meet there. And so we're waiting for that to reopen. But for, as for now, we're, our pastor friend is allowing us to use their church on Sunday afternoons. Come out and be with us in person. We'd love to see you. Um, there's plenty of room for the social distancing guidelines. You can be 30 feet away from people. All right. So um, we just love to see you in person. Okay. Until we see you again.
God loves you. God bless you. And remember these words. First John chapter five, verse four. And ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.